recording and then I'm going to go live to YouTube, which I have not done before. Christina ran these all day, uh, the other day. Okay, cool. Well, welcome whoever is joining us <laughs> uh, to your brunch cocktail time. I'm Ashley with Unglued and I'm joined by Andrea Anderson, who is over in a screen here. <laughs> welcome. If you're watching the replay, if you're live with us in Zoom right now, um, and also if you're watching on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, this will be a, available for a replay um, on there. And you're welcome. If you join us on Zoom, you can watch us, you can participate, you can be on video or off video, you can ask questions. Um, just be sure if you're not talking that you do mute yourself because, um, you know, all that tech fun that we've all learned from this mm -hmm. pandemic time <laughs> and things. And so I am so excited for brunch cocktails. I'm unprepared, so I'm going to be getting prepared as we start talking. Um, but I'm going to introduce you to you, your amazing instructor today <laughs> is award-winning mixologist Andrea Anderson over in Minnesota. Woo! <laughs> She has taught workshops with us for quite some time as we've done late night craft parties, as we've done different mixology things at Proof and other places. Um, and she has just crushed it in the mixology world. She's judged people <laughs> in <laughs> <Every life. day>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for their cocktail making. Um, and she's taught at her summer camp too and they're very often themed workshops. And so today's theme is brunch cocktails. And what I'll do, Andrea, is I'm going to make you the main screen. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, so you'll be <clears throat> nice and big. And I'll watch the chat to see if anything comes in, too. And then oh, I will let you take it away. Thank you so much for doing this today. <laughs> the big screen is so much different. It is. It is totally. You can always switch to gallery, too, if you want. <laughs> it's fine. I always look this way. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. This is so... Um so weird to do without Amanda or like, you know, when we're doing like a really fun themed one to not have a buddy with, or like a, um, what do you, not a sidekick, but you know, a co-pilot, like a co-pilot. Yes. Not that, but like that. <laughs> awesome. Um, so we're going to be doing brunch cocktails. We decided to do the French 75, um, and mimosas. So, if you've ever had those before, they seem, you know, if you order them at a restaurant or at a brunch place, they're going to be what you order. They're always going to be the same. It's going to be French 75 is gin, lemon, and champagne. And everybody knows what a mimosa is. That's, that's like a standard basic brunch cocktail. Um, and that's the orange juice champagne. And we're going to just make them a little bit more fun. And I did pick up a couple of cheat things to show you guys on how to make your brunch cocktails easier. So if you wake up late and, or some people wake up hungover, I, I don't, but some people do and need these loopholes to, you know, kind of quicken things along. Um, so you're not like struggling to make simple syrup at nine o'clock in the morning when your company is showing up at 9.15 or nine o'clock. Um, but we're going to start by making a French 75. And I got these fancy stemless champagne flutes, um, but you can use the stemmed ones. They look a lot fancier. I feel like this one fits my personality and my look for today, just a little less fancy um, or just, you know, a little bit more ground grounded is maybe a good term for that. Um, so we're gonna do a fresh lemon. It makes a world of difference to use fresh juice versus like a real, like the real lemon squeezy, which is fine. And you, that's just one of those cheats is like you can use the lemon squeeze bottle if that's what you have. I know that Costco sells a giant bottle of fun, fancy lemon juice. Take the sticker off there, I've done that before. Um, and I know that the recipe that I sent out said like three quarters of a lemon. Uh, that's like a small lemon. I think half like this size lemon is more, more than enough. Um, so I'm just gonna cut that into quarters just to make it easier to juice and kind of be able to gauge where we're at. And I'm gonna go right into the glass and if you juice your lemons ahead of time, like if you are having company and you just have some fresh lemon juice sitting out, 
more power to you. That's, uh, that's preparation beyond my wheelhouse. So we're looking at about that much lemon juice. And then you're gonna wanna add your simple syrup. And this isn't an iced cocktail. This is just, so you're gonna want uh, your champagne to be chilled because you can put ice in this, but it's not intended to be. So when you're filling up your glass, this these measurements should fill your champagne flute with no ice in it. Um, it just, ice just gets in the way and it makes room, it takes up all the room that the alcohol should be taking up. Uh, and I left my simple syrup over here. I have every single thing on the planet and left that sitting right over there where I could see it. So we're gonna add the simple syrup. And my gin right now has butterfly pea flowers in it. And we've worked with these before. So my gin is like this amazing royal blue color. And then when you add it to citrus, it turns bright purple. Um, you can find those flowers on Amazon um, they might even have them at like Tochi or like Swanson's, but we found these on Amazon and you just pop them in there and sit for, it takes like maybe five minutes to get them to color that your gin or vodka or anything else. I don't suggest putting it in like Bailey's or anything, but ugh, that would be not great. So could we're going to add our gin. Could you remind us of the measurements for the simple syrup and the gin about? Oh yeah, for sure. So I am going to do an ounce and a half of gin. And then I put in an ounce and a half of simple syrup, but I like mine a lot sweeter. So that's where I'm sitting. Um, the recipe that I sent out has an ounce and a half of gin and three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. For you, anything. I forget that not everybody has the recipe. Well, that's perfect. So then you can kind of see, well, it looks really dark right now, but the lemon turned the gin like this fancy electric purple. And then we got our, I don't know if all of you, I'm assuming anybody attending a brunch cocktail video would probably know how to open a bottle of champagne, but here we are. And that's the funnest part. Like it just makes you feel like you're doing something, something exciting. It's like you're celebrating every time you open a bottle. And I am celebrating the fact that this is not a pop top. <laughs> it has the perfect, it had all of the things on it. And now I need to grab a bottle opener because I thought it was a cork top. That is amazing. <laughs> How often does that happen? Yeah, right. <laughs> have you ever used Have you ever used the um, thing that you go like, in a, you know, the sword like thing? Okay, so yeah. we don't allow me to touch swords, but I've been at parties and have videos of my friends doing it, and we should have thought about practicing that for this because that yeah. could have been a great time. Yeah, uh, that's really fun. <laughs> All right, and so it should fill all the way up to the top. And you can see the purple. Now, it's still so dark, I wish that you could see it better. Let's see if we can get a... Ooh. Super That's fancy. crazy. That's so cool. Oh and my it, God. it just makes it look super pretty and just like something different. Like if you were doing these for a baby shower, a bridal shower or something, it's just something a little bit, something a little different. Um, and then you can do like a thin sliced lemon and kind of float it on top. And I got blackberries because they matched the color. And I have like 
a Michael Myers sized knife right now, which is <laughs> But your lemon will just kind of float in there and yellow and purple, always good. And then like if you're just making the straight up regular colored gin, and if you don't like gin, you can also use vodka, but that kind of changes the whole the whole thing, like the traditional one has gin in it. Um, vodka would work if you don't like the flavor of gin, you can make this cocktail with vodka or like flavored vodka. Um, like you could do strawberry vodka or anything, like any of the fruit flavored ones would be freaking awesome. Um, another way to dress this up would be doing like a flavored simple syrup, like with gin, a rosemary simple syrup or like a mint would be really, really good especially with blackberries. So if you were doing the, a regular one with no color in it and it was super clear, floating blackberries and doing a mint simple syrup, so good. Like if I was going to be doing, hosting a party, I would probably make it like that. Um, but your options for syrups are endless. Like any herbs, anything. I mean, you could even do like a black peppercorn syrup, um, which I wouldn't recommend in here, but you could do any anything that you have in the cupboard you can make a, a syrup out of just to you know make it fun do something do whatever you that's just a way that you can dress this up and make it your own and then when people come over and they're like oh, is this your recipe you're like it is thank you this is all mine and i won't even tell them i won't tell them any different <laughs> that's amazing could you tell us uh, how you just recap how you made your gin the color it is again? Oh yeah, so it's butterfly pea flowers. So it's just like these little tea. It's almost yeah, it's just like tea, and you just strain it. You throw them in the bottle and just kind of let them sit for as long as you want. And then when you pour it out, you can strain it. I strain mine ahead of time, so it's just purple and hanging out in there. But you can leave it in there. And like, if you have a pour spout on there, like at market or whatever, when I'm making purple cocktails, I'll just let them sift through the pour spout. And so they don't, they don't find their way through there. And if they do, they just look like little flowers anyway. So then you just have pretty flowers in there and they're completely edible. Um, they don't taste or smell like anything. Like if you open the bag, they kind of smell like leaves or like earth. They don't smell, but they don't taste like anything. They smell like a flower fun that's really cool yeah it's just a really easy way to kind of make make it fun it's so easy like you don't have to do anything to make it work it's foolproof and sciencey because it changes color um like when we do we do a tea cocktail in the summer at market and when you add the lemon juice and vodka and the lemonade on top of it it goes from clear to pink to purple to dark purple and it looks like a unicorn and it's awesome that's so cool <laughs> so that option is there for unicorn brunch cocktails oh man oh man uh, <laughs> that just happened next time yes. that should be real that should be absolutely real <laughs> i'm so excited yes <laughs> um and another there's another way to sneak around simple syrup and that would be by using something like this. So like if you don't have simple syrup and you don't want to make it because I actually have friends that are like, it's too, it's too hard. I'm like, it's water and sugar, equal parts on the stove and you boil it down until it looks syrupy. It's like three minutes, but people still don't want to do it. Um, so you could, like if you're making your French 75, you could, instead of squeezing a lemon and putting in the simple syrup, you could do gin lemonade and top it with champagne. And so then you would just take the measurements for the lemon and the simple syrup and use this instead. So like three ounces of lemonade, the ounce and a half of gin and then top it with champagne. And they have millions of, okay, that was exaggerating. There's like 10 flavors of this, but <laughs> it's super good. There's like strawberry, watermelon. There's so many good ones. And so that would be a fun way to set it up for like a brunch bar kind of deal. So you could put out all these flavors and show them how to make one and then everybody could go through and pick their own flavor and make it make it their own way i love that <laughs> i know now i'm like i wish i had all my friends here 
also that. That would be great. Yes, right. <laughs> we also picked up this bad boy. So this is a pomegranate dragon fruit sparkling water. So if you had somebody that was coming to your brunch or baby shower or freaking Sunday fun day that was not feeling well or doesn't drink, which is also cool, mm -hmm. um, then you could do this instead of champagne, instead of just like, you know, seven up or whatever, because that gets really sweet when you're adding it to something that already has sweet in it, seven up with lemonade and it just gets to be a lot. But they had like a ton of flavors of this. They had like mint cucumber. I just really like the pink bottle of this one. And the dragon fruit looks really fun because I've never seen one in real life. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> living in Fargo, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it looks super cool. And I have not tried it yet, but I'm assuming since I love LaCroix that this is similar and just a little bit more fun flavors. And the bottle looks really fancy. So whoever was not drinking wouldn't feel left out. Mm -hmm. It still looks really cool and neat. Um, and so I brought out a couple of different pieces of glassware. Um, this would be super fun to do a French 75 in. I wanted to show it in the traditional glass, but if you don't have champagne flutes, like I don't, I have that one and because it's me and my kids and I don't host very often, but I do have a bunch of these because they're really neat and we like to drink chocolate milk out of them. <laughs> <laughs> but you, so fun. Yes, that's so great. You level it up. It's very fancy. <laughs> um, but yeah, you could build it in here and it would look just as cool. And it's the same amount of room, even though it doesn't look like it. It's, you know, physics wise, it does work. I think that's the science I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool glass and it's easy to float fruit on the top and it looks really dapper. It's just kind of neat. So you're not tied down to any specific glassware. So if you're having a party, you don't need to feel like you have to go out and get like, good, I don't have any champagne flutes. Everybody go home. <laughs> you can build it in a pint glass, an old glass that you got from the movie theater. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm trying to think of everything that's in my cupboard. I'm like, a National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation mug. A, uh, I want one of those so bad. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yes. I know a guy. Yes. And let's, I got this guy. Normally we would do mimosas. A lot of people like the giant stemmed wine glasses. I do stemless. And again, if you don't have wine glasses, you can build your mimosas in a champagne flute. Like if you go to a restaurant, you'll more than likely get it in a champagne flute because cost effective wise, that's where it's at. Like it's about half as much room in a champagne flute as in here. Um, but if you're drinking them at home, let's be honest, we're not going to want to monetarily wrap our friends in some sort of like we only want you to have a little bit because we invited you over to only have a champagne flute's worth of fun, not a giant, awesome wine flute, wine glass full of fun. Um, so what we're gonna do with this is, so it's usually orange juice and champagne. I got, I'm just obsessed with this brand. I just love it so much. Uh, peach, and then I got peaches to garnish with. Um, not fresh peaches. I got frozen peaches because as much as it is fun to use fresh fruit to garnish and it looks beautiful, if you are having a bunch of people over and they're drinking drinks this big, having frozen fruit in there acts like ice cubes. And so you're able to enjoy it for much longer and it doesn't sit and hang out and, you know, get flat and warm and people are leaving half drinks everywhere around your house and nobody knew, knows whose is whose with the frozen fruit, you can just slam them or sip them, I mean, and enjoy your, enjoy your friends. Um, so I'm going to start with the champagne. As soon as I said that and grabbed my OJ, I was like, no, don't you do it. So we're going to do about, and this seems excessive, about three quarters full but that's where we're at. And so with the big on the bottom, that's about three quarters, even though it looks like half, it's just a lot more, a lot more room on the bottom. And I'm gonna do part peach and part orange. 
because I'm going to be drinking this myself. <gasps> so is my counter and my shirt and my socks. Oh, no. I am so full. <laughs> We're gonna be just fine. And add your juice really slow and you don't need a ton, it's just for flavor. Um, the juice will make the champagne like, so that's why you wanna go slow. Uh, because you don't want to make a huge, huge mess. And I know if we were at my, my best lady friend, Amanda Butler's house, she would have fresh made orange juice and fresh made grapefruit juice because she is amazing like that. Um, but we are going the route of quick and fun and ways to make your life easier when you're having company over. Um, but if you were wanting to dress it up a little bit and if it was a fancier party, you could certainly get some cool carafts and fresh squeeze grapefruit, orange fruit. <laughs> I'm like, what other fruits do you juice? Those would be my two preferred. We did blood oranges one time, that was super good. Um, but it looks really nice to have these like little glass things full of these different flavors of juices. And it does go a long way because you only add a little bit to the top, like it's just for color and a little bit of flavor to kind of make the champagne seem like you're not drinking a whole glass of champagne at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. So you're trying to, it's more of making yourself believe that you're doing something good for yourself. Um, but the fresh fruits, the like juicing the fruit and having fresh fruit garnish is an option to make it look super, super, super cool. Um, and then having like fresh herbs around. So even if you're not putting them in, your drink or like putting them in the recipe because we don't add a simple syrup to this. It's just a pretty basic, um, pretty basic thing to do. But having like a sprig of rosemary or a couple of leaves of mint or anything, like if you have mint and you just like give it a good whack, which always seems ridiculous and I hate doing it in front of people because it's so silly, but it works. And so you slap your mint and you throw it in there and especially with like the peach and the champagne, a little bit of mint is gonna go a freaking long way. And it's gonna look super cool, especially with like frozen, frozen peaches and mint leaves in there. It's gonna look like a completely different cocktail. Like it's really gonna step up your mimosa game. Um, like I said, any of those fresh herbs or like putting fresh strawberries in there. Um, if you did blood oranges and strawberry, so good. Blood oranges and strawberries, or like mint and blueberries would be really good. Um, and if you're not an orange juice fan, yeah, there's peach, like, like I said before, they should make me an ambassador for this company. Um, they have watermelon, they have all kinds of good ones. So you can really open up your world however you'd like because that is what drinks should be. Should be about you because you're the one drinking them, not everybody else. So you can make them however you want. And the peach is so good. Oh my God. That sounds amazing. Do you have a preference with your mimosas between like Prosecco versus champagne at all or that kind of thing? I was actually going to bring that up. I like Prosecco just because it's a little bit less sweet. Okay. Like, um, or actually more sweet, I meant, sorry. Um, and it, the bubbles are different. Like, I just like Prosecco better. Fun. But um some people really like like that dry brute champagne and that's just a whole nother flavor and i am not the biggest fan of that but some people are and that's completely again a preference like any bubbles will do you could also if somebody wanted to put this in there you're just looking for the bubbles and that's what really makes the fun and also speaking of making fun throwing a shot of vodka in there is not unheard of. Or like Aquavit would be really good. So you could do like Prosecco, Cranberry, Aquavit, and then Lime, and it would be, that would be amazing. That's so fun. There's just recipes running through my head right now. I'm like, ooh, no, yes. I really love that. <laughs> yeah, we could only do so much, you know, in like this amount of time. Yeah, 
Well, we're going to have to run this one again with the Prosecco Aquavit Cranberry Lime Mimosa because I think that that would be a hit. And the unicorn cocktail drink you mentioned. Yes. Oh my gosh. Everything unicorn. You, and they sell like sparkly booze too that has glitter in it. Oh my God. Yeah. So we could have sparkly glitter unicorn cocktail day. I should tell you, um, at the at the fest yesterday, Chef Scott, from, who was taught at camp before the food workshops. Oh yeah, yeah. Just at the fest, a unicorn elixir, and it's a cocktail infusion jar, and it has edible glitter in it. No. I think he recommends. I didn't even read this. You to use vodka, but you could also use rum in it. Let it sit for three days, and then you have like an infused liquor. <laughs> but I was like, That's amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> but yeah. So anyways, so many things. I'm going to hunt down edible glitter. Yeah, yes, yes, for sure. I don't know why, of course they have edible glitter, but you know, I always thought that it would probably, uh, oh my God, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, not exist for very long in liquid. Oh, sure, yes, dissipate eventually or. <laughs> yeah, just turn back into whatever it was to begin with. Yes, I'll find out. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested. I'll probably Google it as soon as we're, we're off the chain here. Off the chain, that's what I haven't said in a while. <laughs> With good reason. Oh, that's amazing. Well, if anyone has questions, now would be a great time to ask them. <laughs> but otherwise, this is amazing. I have, been, have two drinks now. Just <laughs> soon. He's soonish. <laughs> what flavors did you use? Well, I, he has his like, uh, like tropical drink mix thing still generally the tiki inspired stuff. And Ooh, so yeah, I basically had pineapple juice and then a really fancy orange juice. <laughs> you know, Amanda uses pineapple in hers too. We had one yesterday with pineapple pineapples. How did I forget to throw pineapple in there? Right. It's a good time. <laughs> pineapple would be really good with peach too. You could do peach pineapple with peaches in it and it would be good. Awesome. Oh, summer. Summer will be here soon enough. Well, it's going to be so good. So sometimes people do use ice cubes in their mimosa if they don't have chilled champagne. Is that acceptable or not really? Like you do um, want generally. I would think so. I've never used ice in a mimosa. Okay. But <laughs> it's certainly an option because it's your freaking party. Like it's Cocktails are your party. It's your place. It's your thing. Um, I don't like, I, ice cubes just get in the way as far as brunch drinking goes for me. So I'm like, Ugh. yeah, that's um, good. Like I'll put them in a wine spritzer or something, but which is also another great brunch cocktail. I'll just do soda water with wine and ice and like a splash of seven up. Cool. Yeah, so if you're a red wine drinker, that's just a nice way to incorporate yet another friend into, into your brunch game. <laughs> you got a red wine buddy. Yes, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, Andrea, thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. This was wonderful joining you on a Sunday morning to kick off like brunchy times and all of that good stuff. So thank good. You so much. I'm gonna unspotlight you for just a sec. That's good. <laughs> and I'll just spotlight myself because I'm, I'm in my weird, super messy kitchen because we just finished the virtual or the actual West Acres craft fest yesterday. And so I'll just tell anyone who's tuning in wherever you are that the virtual fest is today until 10 p.m. You can go to ungluedcraftfest.com. It is the top of that link. And we hope you enjoy your French 75 and your mimosa while you shop the virtual fest. It's gonna be such a good day and we do have more workshops. There's one at 11.30 with an affirmation card deck with Painter Nicole. And we're just looking forward to a really great day. So thank you so much for kicking it off, Andrea, with us. Absolutely. Awesome. You guys all have a great morning. We'll see you soon. I'll toast to a really wonderful, great morning. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Yay.